Hello you guys, welcome to my channel. I thought it would be super fun to do a favorites video, but with DIYs. So I'm constantly watching like beauty and makeup favorites for the year or the month, and I thought it'd be fun to do a video of my 10 favorite DIYs from 2019. If you guys are new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and if you like this video, then please give it a big thumbs up. All right, let's get into it. So I was gonna go from like my least favorite to my most favorite out of my favorites, but that didn't make any sense. So I'm gonna kinda go in no particular order, but I am starting out with my favorite. This is kind of like what started my whole obsession with making stuff out of poster board and foam board. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know I'm talking about my galvanized windmill made out of poster board. So this is number one. And I will link all of these videos down in the description box below if I don't give enough detail of how I made them. So if you guys wanna check out those videos, they will be in the description box below. But so for this one, I took poster board. And the first thing I did was I made little, the little fan blades. That's what fan, the, the blades. And all of the measurements are in the description box of that video, so if you guys wanna go check that out. But so I made all of the little blades out of poster board, and then I took these wood dowels that I had from, I wanna say those were from Dollar Tree, um, and I just took them and I taped them and then glued them onto the poster board. And then for the center, I made just like a circle. Uh, so what I did was I Googled uh, farmhouse windmill and I just wanted to mimic it and make it look exactly the same so on that circle I put four little um, smaller circles in the center and then in between that I have those little foam pads from Dollar Tree uh, furniture pads so it's just kind of giving it a little depth and you know and then for this part I am using some floral wire that I picked up from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna take that and put it all through all of the blades to connect it and then I am taking it out and I'm gonna spray paint it. This is just, this isn't my normal galvanizing method. If you guys are unfamiliar with that, I will link that video down below as well. Um, this was kind of when I was just getting started with my galvanizing and I hadn't quite perfected it yet. So this was just like a metallic spray paint that I used. And then I went in with some black and some rust colored acrylic paint and I'm just gonna kind of rust everything up. I'm gonna do the whole entire floral wire and then I'm also gonna do it on the edges of the blades. And then now I'm going back in with my platinum acrylic paint and I'm just gonna sponge it on with a little sponge and make it look really nice and galvanized. I just love how this one turns out. I took it down a while ago and I actually need to repaint it. it the paint, I don't know, it just doesn't look as good as it used to, so I might actually go back and repaint it and then put it back up again, and I just love this one. I was so happy with how that one turned out. So number two is my hanging wall plants. So this one was really inspired, I well, it was the Look for Less Challenge for that month, and I had been eyeing these for so long. They had them at Hobby Lobby, I've seen them online, but they are not cheap. I wanna say they were like 35 bucks a piece, so I was like, hmm, what could I make these out of? So with these, I actually took my blade from my windmill and that is going to be the back part. So I actually measured that out and I'm using that on foam board. So that's gonna be the very back. And then I took my poster board and just kind of like measured it out to kind of see like, cause I wanted it to be rounded. So it needed to be like a little bit bigger than the backing so that I could glue it and make it round like to make the little pot. And then once I got that all glued on, I went ahead and took some twine and just glued that to the top and the bottom and it just really made it look like the rim of the little pots. Once I did that, I took my gray matte spray paint and did my galvanizing method. So I just spray painted it with this and then when I took it in after it was dry, I used my platinum acrylic paint again with the little sponge and I just sponged that right on. And I just love the finish that it gives it. Once it dries, it just looks so realistic. And then I picked up these little floral pieces from Hobby Lobby. They were kind of a bit of a splurge. I wanna say they were like $10, um, but I used my 40% off coupon and so it wasn't horrible, but you know, I like to, usually like to get my stuff from Dollar Tree. And then I'm just putting them in one of those little floral cubes from Dollar Tree and then stuffing it into the pot. And I just think these looked, these turned out so good. And on the back, I went ahead and put a little uh, hole so that I could hang it up with twine. 
And I just found that that was kind of the best way to hang it onto the wall because they're not super sturdy, but they're not gonna fall apart or anything, but that was just the easiest way to hang it. And I just love how these turn out. I had someone over at my house the other day and she had no idea that these were made out of poster board and foam board. All right, for number three, this is a galvanized lavender wall decor. This piece was inspired by my aunt. I was at her house for a holiday and she had these two little pictures up. I wanna say she got them at Kirkland's and I was like, oh my goodness, I wonder if I could make that and recreate it. So I just loved how these looked. So I went home and I found them online and then I just kind of tried to mimic it and make it look the same. So for this one, the first thing I did was I just took a frame from Dollar Tree that had that little eat sign in it and I took that out in the, the glass as well and I'm painting it with white and then that rusty color as well just to kind of, I wanted it to be an off-white and I ended up printing off two little pit lavender pictures and I end up not using this one. So you couldn't really see it, but I ended up using the first one. You'll see it in the very end. This one just turned out to be a little too big, so I it just didn't look right. But what I was doing for this one was just kind of painting it off white as well, so it just didn't look so stark white and look so maybe not as real. And then I'm taking a piece of poster board that I measured out that is gonna fit inside the frame and I'm doing my galvanized method on it. I'm gonna make it look like that corrugate, corrugated metal. And so I'm just folding it back and forth. I'm gonna be gluing it into the frame. I also sanded it a little bit to make it look a little more rustic. And then once you have that all finished, you're just gonna go ahead and glue the picture in there. But like I said, I didn't use this one, I used this one. And I did take a little bit of my paint and rub it around the edge just to make it a little more distressed. And I just think that one turned out so cute too. It looks very similar to the picture that my aunt has up in her house. All right, for this next one, this this is number four. I get quite a few comments on this sign. I actually have it. I don't know if you guys can see it right now. Nope, it's off the camera, but this is my what the fork sign and I freaking love this sign. It just kind of fits my personality, if you know what I mean. And I, it was so easy to make and I just, I love this one. So this was inspired by uh, World Market Decor. I have a video where I did three different ones and um, this is one of them. So for this one, I just took another frame from Dollar Tree. This is an eight by 10. And then I'm going to be using this con wood contact paper from Dollar Tree. I use this in a lot of my DIYs. I love this stuff and it has come in so handy. So first thing I did was just removed all the glass and everything and I'm going to be painting it. And again, I'm gonna kind of do like an off-white, so I'm gonna be mixing the white with my uh, brown, this Waverly Antique. And I found this fork, my mom actually gave this to me. She had a, some extras and she, I just thought it was cool because it had a neat design on it. So I'm painting the fork the same color as the frame outside. And then next, I'm measuring the contact paper to the little mirror or the glass that goes in the frame. And I'm gonna put that on the glass. And then I'm just gonna take that same color paint and just freehand it and write what the fork. And I just kind of went off the sign from World Market. I just kind of eyed it. It's not perfect by any means, but for freehand, I don't think it's too bad. I just went ahead and glued the fork on. And that is it for that one. I think that one turned out so cute. I love that sign and it literally cost me $2 to make. Okay, number five, we are going to be doing this cute little miniature windmill home sign. This was inspired, I wanna say I found something similar to this online and I thought I could recreate it and I just love this one. So the first thing I did was take two little five by seven canvases from the Dollar Tree and I just glued them together. And then I'm gonna take that same contact paper and I'm gonna cover the canvases with the contact paper. And then you might wanna glue it down just to make sure that it stays in place. And then I'm gonna take that Waverly Antique paint again and I'm gonna make it kind of like a stain. So I'm gonna mix it with water and I'm just gonna paint the whole entire thing with that. And then now I'm gonna make a miniature little windmill. So I took one of those little furniture pads and like just for the circle. And then I kind of just freehanded the blade. I didn't like the first one I drew, so I did this one. And then I cut out, I think there were six or seven of them that I made. And then the next thing I did was find, I'm gonna use this floral wire again and I'm gonna cut it in little itty bitty, like 
maybe two inch pieces. Um, and then I'm gonna glue those to the back of the blades and that is how I'm gonna connect it to the center little circle. And then I went ahead and traced another little circle so that I could put that one on top so that it was just kind of holding it in place a little bit better. And then I took another little circle of the floral wire just to wrap around the back of it so that it looked more realistic. And I just glued that right to the back. And then I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint this little windmill and do my galvanizing method with this too. So I already did it with the gray spray paint and then I'm going to sponge it on with my platinum acrylic paint. And then I'm using these little stencils that I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm just gonna stencil those on with some white um, acrylic paint with my little sponge and then I'm also going to make these blades a little rusty as well so I'm using that same little rust color mixed with black and I'm just going to go along the outside of all of the blades and the floral wire and everything just to make it look a little rustic and then once that's dry you can go ahead and glue it onto your sign. I did put a little bit of twine on the back here but I ended up not hanging it. I just have it sitting up Actually, no, I don't have it sitting up anywhere right now, so I need to put that up. So yeah, you're just gonna glue that right into the center and the little windmill makes the O. I just love how that one turned out and that one was cost me, what, $2 as well. Because a lot of the supplies I already have, like that contact paper, I can do so many different projects with. So I love that stuff. If you ever see it at Dollar Tree, pick it up. All right, guys, number six. These are my cute little lavender floral potted plants from Dollar Tree. So I started with these three little pots from Dollar Tree. They came in a three pack for a buck and I spray painted them with my gray because I'm gonna make them look galvanized. And then now I'm gonna take those little Jenga blocks and I'm gonna make a little tray for them to sit in. So I just measured it out. I brought the pots in and kind of set them um, just to kind of figure out how big I needed it to be. And then once I figured out how I wanted them to look, I went ahead and started gluing them together. And I do, I always do a mixture of my hot glue and then just some super glue, just to make sure that they stay intact. And then once I was finished gluing those all together, I'm gonna take that same Waverly paint and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of water as well and paint it on like a stain. And then for the little pots, I'm also doing the galvanizing method. So I sponged them with the platinum acrylic paint. And then I picked up these cute little flowers from, their lavender flowers from Walmart. And they were only 97 cents. And then I'm taking some twine and just tying those right around the little pots. And then I'm using this little floral uh, cubes. What are these things called? I'm using those on the inside. And then I'm just sticking the little lavender pieces right in there. And then to finish off the tray, I used this little burlap uh, lace ribbon from Dollar Tree and I cut it in half and I just glued it right around the bottom or right around the tray. And I think that one looks so cute. I love that one. All right, number seven, we are going to talk about my Dollar Tree wood, faux wood shelf that I have hanging up in my bathroom. And I will say, I did this video in June and this thing is still intact. It is still above my bathtub. I still have stuff on it and it has not gone anywhere. So I cannot believe this thing is actually held up. All it is is foam board. Foam board and then covered with that contact paper. So what I did was I figured out how big I wanted the shelf to actually be. And I went ahead and cut that out. And then you're gonna wanna make sure you cut a smaller little piece, like for the bottom, like the lip, and you're gonna wanna cut it the same size. And I don't think I had one that was big enough, so what I did was I took these two smaller pieces and glued them together and just made them the length that I needed them to be. And then once you have that all cut out and glued together, you're gonna cover it up with the contact paper. And I'm measuring out right now where I want to put the little shelf hanger. And I picked these up from Dollar Tree as well, and you're just gonna kind of glue those right on there. I'm using my super glue and hot glue as again, just to kind of keep it intact better. And I ended up hanging this up with command strips. I just put a couple command strips on each side of the black part. And in, like I said, this thing has held up and I'm pleasantly surprised. I think it looks super cute. And I don't think you can really tell that it's not really wood. 
All right, number seven, we are going to talk about my home pineapple sign. These were some fun DIYs I did this summer. I did three different pineapple ones and I thought this one was so cute. I picked up this little pineapple, it wasn't so little, it was like pretty big actually. Found this at Marshall's or TJ Maxx, one of the two. It was in the clearance section, it was pretty beat up, but it was only 70 cents I believe. Let me see. Yeah, this thing was only 70 cents. It's a little beat up, like I said, but I'm just gonna go ahead and remove everything. I think it's like a picture holder maybe. So I just took everything off of it and I found these wood letters at Hobby Lobby and I'm gonna be using this, um, not cardstock. Is that cardstock? Is that what that's called? Yeah, cardstock. So I'm gonna be going with this one and I'm first I'm gonna take all the letters and the pineapple outside. I'm going to spray them with my deep gray um, spray paint again to make it look galvanized. If you guys are noticing a theme here, I like galvanized stuff. So I'm gonna spray it with that and then I'm gonna bring it inside and do it with the um, platinum paint to make it look galvanized. But first I'm going to, I'm taking my Mod Podge and I'm just gonna glue this uh, cardstock onto the foam board. This is a piece of foam board. So I'm just going to glue those two pieces on there and then cut it out with my X-Acto knife. Now I am doing the sponging with the platinum paint to make it look galvanized. And I am also going to take my little rusting method as well and I'm going to make the pineapple look rusty and the letters. But first I'm going to draw some lines on the pineapple to make it actually look like a pineapple. You know how they look like that. And then when I go back to do the rusting method, I'm gonna draw the lines with that as well so you can really see them. And then next, I'm just gonna take the, some twine and put that around the whole entire edge of that foam board just to kind of give it a more finished look, kind of like a, you know, more like a piece of art. It just looked really unfinished before, but I think that one turned out super cute. I love that one. I love putting that one up in the summer. It's just like a farmy, farmhouse like summery DIY decor. So I thought that one was really super cute. Right, guys, number nine, we are going to talk about my fall ladder. I love this one. So I had been seeing ladders everywhere and I really wanted to try to make one, but I didn't know what to make it out of. So I was kind of thinking outside the box again and I went to Dollar Tree and I was just like looking around. I'm like, what the heck could I do? Could I make this out of? So I ended up taking two brooms. They've got the little brooms. It's kind of like a metal. The handle is kind of like a metal material. So I'm using those and I unscrewed the bottom obviously. And then I took three plungers and took off the rubber part obviously. And what I'm gonna do, oh, and I'm also using this tablecloth from Dollar Tree that I'm gonna make the little uh, banners out of. So the first thing I did was just laid out the two broomsticks to kind of figure out like how big I wanted it to be, like how separated I needed it to be. So the little pieces of plunger are actually different sizes. They vary from like small to large. So I'm gonna kind of like space them out and then glue them onto the broomstick. And for the little, um, for the little banners, I'm just cutting them and kind of making a little hem on them so that they're not unfinished. And I'm taking my stencils and I'm gonna write out fall. And then once I glued the ladder together, I went and took it outside. I don't know why I spray painted it that, that color that I did. It's kind of like a kind of like a grayish blue almost. But once I brought that in, I wanted to cover it with um, a brown paint. So I just took that same brown paint and painted the whole entire thing. And then once that was dry, I took some twine and like just wrapped it around the each little corner just to kind of reinforce it so that it wouldn't fall apart and that it is really holding in place very well. So once these banners were done, I'm just gonna go ahead and glue these on there. And the cool thing about this ladder is I, I think I did it for Halloween. I made new little banners. I meant to do it for Christmas and I just did not do it. But it's cool because you can do these for any season you want. You can just add different little flags or banners to it. And I think this one turned out so cute. It's smaller than I was really wanting, um, but it looks cute. I set it outside during the fall and Halloween and it looked it looks cute. I One day I would like to get a larger one or maybe I'll make a bigger one somehow. But I think for Dollar Tree items, I think that one turned out really cute. All right guys, number 10, we are gonna talk another fall DIY. I know it's not fall, but it's okay. This is one of my favorites and this is probably one of the easiest ones I've ever done. So I found these little pumpkins and then I ha found the little letters. They're like galvanized metal letters that say thankful, blessed, and harvest, I think. 
So I went ahead and turned the pumpkins over and painted them white. I took off the little galvanized leaf and then that little bow. And so I'm painting the back. So you could actually use this as like, it could be double-sided, you know, reversible. You could switch it over. So once I painted it, I took a brush that already had some black paint on it and just kind of drew lines to make it look like a more realistic pumpkin. And then I also went along the outsides to make it look a little distressed. And then I went ahead and just took some regular twine and tied that around each top of on the stems and then glued those down. And then I reattached the little galvanized leaf. Next, I'm taking those little galvanized letters and just hot gluing those right onto the pumpkins. And that is it for these three pumpkins. I think they turned out so cute and these were so easy. All right, you guys, that does it for my top 10 favorite DIYs that I did last year for 2019. What was your guys' favorite? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if y'all are new, y'all. Why do I say that? I swear. It's like all right, you guys, I hope you have a good one and we'll see you all soon. Bye.